Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, 
nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his disciples upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear the word of the Lord. And Thanks be to God. God. Our reading from the first letter of St. Paul. Beloved, if you invoke as Father, whom he judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourn, realizing that you are ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, 
as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The very first day, the very first day of the week. Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walking with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleophas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that we would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is near the evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and gathered and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. 
Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter once again. We are still in the midst of the joys of these days. And I can't help but think of the beautiful weather we've had these past couple of weeks. Easter joy shining through our sunlight, our temperatures, just the beautiful weather that God has given us. What a blessing. What a blessing during these days. Presence. Not a birthday present, not a Christmas present, but presence with another. The presence of someone. Presence brings about comfort. Comfort in our lives. Presence evokes the warmth of love. Presence lets us just relax. It lets us just be ourselves. When we are with someone that we love, we're who we meant to be. We're, we can relax. We can be ourselves. You know, I think of the gift of being at home. For some, maybe it's the gift of going to grandma and grandpa's house. When we are at home, when we are with our family, with our mom and our dad, our brothers and sisters, our grandma and grandpa, it's different. There's a comfort, there's a relaxation, there's a joy, there's a peace, there's a, a happiness about us. When we are with someone that we love, we are, when we are in their presence, talking to them, being with them, conversing with them, comfort, joy, peace, happiness floods into our lives. I was particularly struck by the beauty and the power of the disciples' words in our gospel today. As they journey to Emmaus, they say to Jesus, stay with us. Stay with us, Lord. I think they speak for all of us. Stay with us, Lord. Just like a child on the first day of kindergarten says to their mom or their dad, stay with me, don't leave me. Just as a college student on their first day going off to college says to their parents, I don't want to leave, I want to stay here. So too do we say to our God, stay with us, Lord. Do not leave us, do not abandon us. Remain in our presence. That's the prayer of the apostles. That's our prayer. And what's Jesus' response? What does he say? What does he do? He doesn't ignore them. He doesn't stand apathetic to their prayer. No, he answers it in a very specific way. What did he do? The gospel says he takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and then he gives it. And at that moment, the disciples' eyes are open, and he vanishes. What is this but the Mass? What is this but the Eucharist? My friends, Jesus' answer to our prayer, our cry, our longing, stay with us, Lord, his answer to that is the Eucharist. Jesus Christ, who stays with us, body, blood, soul, and divinity, in the most holy Eucharist. Stay with us, Lord, we say. And he responds, I will be with you until the end of time in the Eucharist. My friends, do you see the beauty? Do you see the immensity of this reality? God is here. God has rooted his presence in Pittsburgh, Kansas. He has made his house here in our community. The home of Jesus Christ is in Pittsburgh. The home of Jesus Christ is in Girard. The home of Jesus Christ is in Frontenac, in Columbus, in Galena, in Wichita, in Lincoln, Nebraska, right next to Memorial Stadium. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> 
God has made himself radically available to us. The comfort, the happiness, the joy, the peace, the fulfillment that our hearts long for, he gives to us in our churches, in the tabernacle, in his home right here. Just like we can go to mom and dad's, just like we can go to grandma and grandpa's and feel an extraordinary happiness about us, we can come here and be with the God we're made for. I'd like to end today with the words of our Lord. In the book, In Sinu Yezu, it's a fantastic book, Jesus appears to a Benedictine monk and gives private revelation. He, he reveals his heart to this monk. And some specific words speak to this prayer. Stay with us. Here is the words of our Lord. He says this. Certain sophisticated minds will laugh at what I say. They forget that I am not there in the tabernacle like some inanimate object. No, rather, it is my heart that waits for you in the tabernacle. It is my gaze that, full of tenderness, fixes itself from the tabernacle on those who draw near to it. I am not there for my own sake. I am there to feed you and to fill you with the joys of my presence. Stay with us, Lord. He says to us, I am here with you forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust and confidence in our God, we bring in these prayers and petitions. For the church throughout the world, may Jesus, our head, grant us reconciliation and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For war-torn nations, may there be peace in every place experiencing back violence and war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those saddened by loss or discouragement, may the promises of the risen Lord lift them from their despair, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community who struggle with their faith, may God's word open their hearts and nourish them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died, may they rejoice in the presence of our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Phyllis Fry, who recently passed away, for her and for her family, that the Lord may show her the way to the kingdom of peace and light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for a uh, speedy recovery within our, our, our nation, within our, our world from this worldwide pandemic, and for all healthcare workers fighting on the front lines. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you send down your Holy Spirit upon us, fill us with the virtues of faith, hope, and charity, decrease in our hearts the joy of these Easter days, that we may too glory in the resurrection. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sing together the identity hymn of your glory as they 
Hartley. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, to pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment. Since I cannot at this moment. Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks.